Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in distress. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies and those who pursue me. O Lord, let me never be put to shame. I call on you. This Holy Mass is being offered for the intentions of Zita Isabel de Souza. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise. Pray. O God, who in this season give your church the grace to imitate devoutly the Blessed Virgin Mary, in contemplating the passion of Christ. Grant, we pray, through her intercession, that we may cling more firmly each day to your only begotten Son, and come at last to the fullness of his grace, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear so many disfaging me, terror from every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All those who used to be my friends watch for my downfall. Perhaps he will be seduced in error. Then we will master him and take our revenge. But the Lord is at my side a mighty hero. My opponents will stumble, mastered, confounded by their failure. Everlasting, unforgettable disgrace will be theirs. But you, Lord of hosts, you have probed with justice, who scrutinize the loins and heart. Let me see the vengeance you take on them, for I have committed my cause to you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered my soul of the needy from the hands of the evil men. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In my anguish, I called to the Lord, and he heard my voice. In, In my, my anguish, I called to the Lord, and he heard my voice. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my savior. My God is the rock where I take refuge my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. The Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. In my anguish I called to the Lord. He heard me. The waves of the dead rose above me. The torrents of destruction sailed me. The snares of the, de of the grave entangled me. The traps, the traps of death comforted me. In, in my, my anguish, anguish I, I called, called to the Lord, Lord and he, he answered me in my distress. In my anguish I called to the Lord, I cried to God for help. From his temple he heard my voice, my cry came to his ears. In, in my, my anguish, anguish I called to the Lord, Lord and he heard, he heard my him. voice. Please stand to greet the gospel. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
The Jews fetched stones to stone him, so Jesus said to them, I have done many good works for you to see, works from my Father. For which of these are you stoning me? The Jews answered, We are not stoning you for doing a good work, but for blasphemy. You are only a man, and you claim to be God. Jesus answered, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? So the law used the word gods of those to whom the word of God was addressed, and scripture cannot be rejected. Yet you say to someone, the Father has consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming, because he says, I am the Son of God. If I am not doing my Father's work, there is no need to believe me. But if I am doing it, then even if you refuse to believe in me, at least believe in the work I do. Then you will know for sure that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. They wanted to arrest him then, but he eluded them. He went back again to the far side of the Jordan to stay in the district where John had once been baptizing. Many people who came to him there said, John gave no signs, but all he said about this man was true, and many of them believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the first reading, the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah was abused and denounced by his contemporaries, by the people around him. And yet his trust in the Lord did not waver. He committed his cause to God, and he was therefore able to sing God's praise even in danger and adversity. He did not doubt God's providence and his will to save. Jesus confronts those who were ready to stone him. They had accused him of blasphemy for claiming to be God. But Jesus is indeed the Son of God, sent into the world to do the will and the work of his heavenly Father. And the signs or works of Jesus reveal who he is. Yet even this did not quell their hostility. And we are told that his detractors, the people who were against him, sought to arrest him. Jesus manages to escape, for his hour, the hour of his passion, although now near, is not yet. And by contrast, many on the far side of the Jordan, who remembered the prophecy of John the Baptist, they now came to believe in Jesus. They recognized him as the Anointed One, the Messiah, the Christ. And so it is that the time for our Lord's passion, his arrest, his trial, his humiliation, his death upon the cross, this time draws closer still. Traditionally, on the Friday of Passion Tide, the Friday before Palm Sunday, the Church remembers and honors our Blessed Lady at the foot of the cross, the sharing of Mary's, uh, her sharing in the Passion of Christ. And that's reflected in the Collect, the opening prayer at Mass this morning. Jesus commits his cause, like Jeremiah, to God, to the Father. And just as God remained faithful to Jeremiah the prophet, so even more will he remain united with his own son. And so these final days of Lent, they lead us to ask ourselves whether we are prepared to stand with our Lord in his passion and in his death. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
blessed are you, Lord God of all. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O merciful God, that we may be worthy to serve ever fittingly at your altars, and there to be saved by constant participation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the cross, so that dead to sin we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. The act of spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the unfailing protection of the sacrifice we have received never leave us, O Lord, and may it always drive far from us all that would do us harm, through Christ our Lord. Amen. After Mass, there will be the Stations of the Cross, and then this evening, again, half past six, Stations of the Cross, followed by Mass um, at seven. So any members of your family who are at work or school or whatever now, they can come this evening. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The way of the cross is a pilgrim way, a journey in faith with Jesus into the mystery of God's love for us. Jesus did not take up the cross in order to show us how to die, but to show us how to live. May Our Lady, on this day of her pa sharing the passion of her Son, guide us on the way of Jesus and make our pilgrimage a fruitful one. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, 
lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We pray, bless you, O Christ, and we praise you. Pilate said to the crowd, Behold the man. The crowd replied, Crucify him, crucify him. He handed him over to them to be crucified. Pilate and Jesus are two very different kinds of men. Pilate is a symbol of the pride, the wealth, and the power of the Roman Empire. Jesus is the true man, another humanity, a divine humanity. When Pilate condemns Jesus, he condemns love, and he makes him the choice. We sometimes, and when Pilate condemns Jesus, he condemns love, he makes the choice we sometimes make by refusing to follow a way of life open to God. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me whatever you will. At the cross her station keeping stood the mournful mother weeping. Close to Jesus, to the last. The second station, Jesus receives his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. They took charge of Jesus and made him carry his cross to Golgotha. The cross is something we often see as a burden, something heavy, painful, unwanted. Jesus did not come to glorify suffering, but by taking up his cross, he shows us how precious we are in the sight of God. There is no limit to his love for us. It teaches us that we can turn each cross into a victory of love, just like Jesus. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me whatever you will. Through her heart his sorrow sharing, all his bitter anguish Bearing now at length the sword has passed. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Even when God afflicts you, he shows mercy in his abounding kindness. Jesus came as man, sharing all the limitations and weakness of human nature, all but sin. His falling to the ground reminds us of our weakness. His getting up again reminds us that only love can enable us to overcome our wrongdoing, our sin, and help us to begin anew. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me whatever you will. Oh, how sad and sore distress was that mother highly blessed of her soul be caught
The fourth station, Jesus meets Mary, his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Simeon said to Mary at the presentation in the temple, A sword of sorrow will pierce your heart too. A mother meets her son, both in agony, both in indescribable heartache. In this man, Jesus, and in this woman, Mary, there is a spoken yes to the Father, a yes to love, to that divine desire to restore human relationships within the heart of God, the heart of love itself. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart of having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me whatever you will. Christ above in torment hangs, she beneath holds the pangs of her dying glorious Son. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene carries the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. As they were leading Jesus away to crucify him, they compelled Simon of Cyrene to carry the cross behind Jesus. Simon was taken from the crowd and forced to help. Jesus needed Simon, the cross was heavy, and he was growing weaker. We meet those who suffer but do not want to do anything that might make us unpopular. Let us be like Simon and help others with their crosses. <coughs> I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always and then do with me whatever you will. Is there one who would not weep, whelmed in misery so deep? Christ, dear Mother, to behold. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face from me. Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. A woman sees the holy face disfigured. She wipes that face. This simple act leaves her with the imprint of the face of Jesus on her towel. Each act of charity leaves an imprint of the Savior's image on our souls, as on Veronica's towel. Let us be like her and respond to those who suffer. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me whatever you will. Can the human heart refrain from partaking in the pain, in that mother's pain untold? The seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. I am a worm and not a man, scorned by all, the laughing stock of the people. Jesus falls again. 
We fall again and again because of infidelity or hardness of heart. God does not leave us crushed by our burden and our sin, but he saves us. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me whatever you will. Bruised, derided, cursed, defiled, she beheld her tender child. All in bloody scourges ran. The eighth station, the women of Jerusalem mourn for Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. And there followed him women who bewailed and lamented him. But he said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but for yourselves and for your children. Jesus reminds us that it is not enough to have pity on those who suffer and are subject to injustice. We have to act, to commit ourselves to changing what needs to be changed in our own lives and in our society. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me whatever you will. For the sins of his own nation saw him die in desolation, till his spirit forth he sent. The ninth station, Jesus falls a third time under the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. He became humbler yet, making himself obedient to death, death on a cross. Every station along this way of the cross is a milestone of obedience and self-deprivation. When we see Jesus falling the third time, we appreciate how much he loved us. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me whatever you will. O thou mother fount of love, touch my spirit from above. Make my heart with thine accord. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. When Jesus is stripped at Golgotha, not just is he stripped of his clothes, but also of his dignity, his respect, his rights. He is also stripped of his life by the Romans. He was naked and vulnerable before the people. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me whatever you will. Make me feel as thou hast felt. Make my soul to glow and melt with the love of Christ, my Lord. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. 
We are surrounded by many people nailed, as it were, to a bed of sickness, to a wheelchair, to pain, to suffering. It is this reality that Jesus shares as he remains nailed to the cross. It is this suffering, this reality, that Jesus wished to transform with his love. It is in this suffering that he calls us also to care for and fill with his love by giving hope and giving our time, by sharing with those in need. Only love can give heart to our wounded brothers and sisters. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always, then do with me what you will. Holy Mother, pierce me through. In my heart each wound renew. Of my Saviour crucify. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Greater love has no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. While pinned immobile to the cross, Jesus cried out, I thirst. They gave him vinegar, sour wine, wine pressed from the vintage of our toil, a symbol of the bitter taste of our sinfulness. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always and then do with me whatever you will. Let me share with thee his pain, who for all my sins was slain, who for me in torments died. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Pilate, having been reassured that Jesus was dead, granted his body to Joseph, who took Jesus down from the cross. Jesus, taken down from the cross, is again in the arms of his mother, as he was in the stable of Bethlehem and at Nazareth. The friends of Jesus acted out of love, and they also acted out of haste in order to bury him before the feast of Passover. The Jews wanted no reminders of the cross, but the cross remains throughout history as a sign of God's love for us. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always, then do with me whatever you will. Let me mingle tears with thee, mourning him who mourn for me all the days that I may live. The fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in it was a new tomb. As the tomb was close at hand, they laid him there. From the moment when man, because of sin, was banished from the tree of life, the earth became a burial ground. In one of the innumerable tombs scattered all over the continents of this planet of ours, the Son of God, the man, Jesus Christ, conquered death with death. Jesus lies in the ground dead, yet now the earth is pregnant with eternal life.
I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me whatever you will. By the cross with thee to stay, there with thee to weep and pray, is all I ask of thee to give. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Virgin of all virgins best, listen to my fond request. Let me share thy grief divine. Let me to my latest prayer in my body bear the death of that dying son of thine. Wounded with his every wound, Steep my soul till it hath sworn in his very blood away. Be to me, O virgin I, lest in flames I burn and die in his awful judgment day. Christ, when thou shalt call me hence, be thy mother my defense, be thy cross my victory. While my body here decays, may my soul thy goodness praise, safe in paradise.